Today on Yeti at Large, a segment we call Round Trip. We compare our first journey and then our second journey, look at the differences, and average the scores. Let's go! While I wasn't planning on flying round trip on this one, I was planning on driving home from the East Coast. Plans change, and I was able to book a last minute return ticket. It went up by about $30 but still a very good deal. Interesting that I'm here in Charleston and Breeze has a much larger presence at this airport, meaning there's more gate crew, there's more check-in counter crew, and there's more ground crew. They have several gates here and four planes. My plane's on its way from Hartford this morning. Um, Phoenix is a larger airport, less underserved, which uh, the Breeze model is looking for those high volume, point-to-point, -point underserved routes. So it's interesting to see the difference. Uh, the ground crew's pleasant, they're professional. I was able to get right through baggage check-in and I'm here at the gate now looking forward to another flight. Good morning, how are you? Good, thanks. The first thing I do after finding my seat is check my smart tag to make sure my luggage is on board. This guy's my new favorite ramp crew of all time. Look at that haircut. It's like Slash meets the Ramones. Rock on, brother. And I'd like to thank the South Carolina Air National Guard. These are the Globemasters that buzz my hotel every few hours the last three days. That's a lot more cabin noise than I've heard previously. As soon as we get off the ground, I'll put the camera away and we'll get a decibel meter. No chit chat during takeoff. It's a sanitary cockpit, meaning the only communications focused on flight safety and a, and a good takeoff. Would have been nice to get a chance to see those Boeing Dreamlifters up close. Before we continue with the review, let's take a moment of seriousness to express our condolences for the people and the lives lost in the tornadoes that were taking place below us. The weather radar showed significant storm fronts and the pilots did an excellent job of navigating around that to smooth out the air. Little did we know that that storm system was spawning tornadoes in the Mississippi area that would cause significant damage and take lives. One of the things that's interesting when you look at commercial aviation is that the westbound jets will fly an even number altitude. Their flight was scheduled originally, uh, they filed for 34,000 feet, but I believe we adjusted that to 36,000 feet. The eastbound planes will fly the odd numbers and they say even plus 500 or odd plus 500. You can see here that the FAA VFR rules mandate that Planes maintain a minimum separation of a thousand feet in either direction. We had a very busy flight track today as evidenced by the handful of planes I captured flying past our cabin windows. Focusing our attention back inside the cockpit, I had the exact opposite experience with the power ports. The USB ports worked exactly like I had hoped and I was able to keep my phone charged, which was different from the first flight. However, the electrical plug for my computer, I couldn't get to work at all. It would flicker for a moment and nothing I tried helped. I tried the other plugs and same result. So the battery on my computer died pretty quick. 
limiting the amount of work I could complete on this five hour, 18 minute flight. I spoke with several other passengers who had flown Breeze uh, multiple times and they cited this as an ongoing issue along with their anxious for Wi-Fi to be available and the cleanliness issue of the cabin was ongoing for them. About the same time my computer died, the cabin crew came by and offered me the largest bag of Chex Mix I've ever seen. Three and a half servings per container, more like three and a half minutes. And I turned my attention to my favorite pastime, trying to find airstrips on the ground below. As we got further west, the clouds parted out and I was rewarded with a lot of little airstrips along the country. Anyone familiar with the Phoenix area will recognize how rare it is to see the Salt River completely full of water and flowing. We've had a lot of rain and snow in the west this winter. There's a great story of German POWs trying to escape from the Phoenix Zoo on a boat they made using the Salt River only to discover it was bone dry. After taxing around three quarters of the entire airport, we ended up sitting on the tarmac for a while waiting for our gate to open. Now we had a total flight time of five hours and 18 minutes. It was advertised as four hours and 48 minutes, but I do believe avoiding those storm systems was responsible for that. From pushback to wheel stop, our total elapsed time was six hours and nine minutes and that was the delay on the tarmac. Uh, the captain kept us well informed and I think everybody really appreciated that. It turns out the issue was with a fueling truck. That's another third-party vendor that airlines have to deal with. It isn't necessarily under their direct operational control. While we make our way off the plane and to the baggage claim, we're going to get ready to look at the comparison of the scorecards. Again, we're going to look at this flight versus the previous flight and look at the difference. Here we go. My booking experience was tremendously improved the second time. The cost of the flight was more expensive, obviously a last minute ticket, but it still cost points. Check-in was tremendously improved at the gate in Charleston. Punctuality went down because of the delay on the tarmac. Boarding stayed the same. The ground crew was responsible for that delay, so they bore the burden of most of that experience even if it is out of the airline's control sometimes. Cabin crew and flight crew stayed at perfect 100s. The cabin experience stayed the same because of the cleanliness issues. The laboratory went up a little bit. It was much cleaner and there was no wait times. The amenities stayed the same because I had power issues, albeit different plugs. Disembarking was much smoother this time and baggage went up by 10 points because the bags came out almost immediately at the correct carousel. So the second flight got a total of 93.46. That's an increase. Average the two out and the round trip score is 92.69. That's still an A-plus airline. I'm very impressed with Breeze and I'll be keeping a keen eye on their progress and their growth. Their fares are very low. And improvement in any one of these categories can come, but they'll be spending money to do it, which will translate into higher fares. As long as safety stays first and foremost, and Breeze makes incremental adjustments to create efficiencies without spending a lot of money, I think they're on to a good formula. I'm anxious to see how they can expand into other underserved markets and create some more point-to-point -point flights for the average traveler. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share this channel with a friend, and leave a comment below. And remember, the show goes on.